All right, this video is to introduce a item that I recently purchased, which I, I kind of upgraded because I found as it was, it just didn't work as well as I had hoped. So this item is an adjustable set of wooden sock blockers uh, from the Etsy store, Wooden Gifts Creations. Um, because I've already uh, modified mine, here's a printout of that listing, just for clarity. Um, it obviously is not a piece of paper that's gray. It's a wood form that looks just like this. So this is actually awesome as an idea. The idea being that you can adjust them. Either you buy a small set, a medium set, or a large set. And when you change this placement on the main sock blocker, then you can change the length of the sock, effectively changing the size that it would work with. I really like this idea. It's well made, um, but I found that when I had the two wooden components in my hand, and they were regular size, not these paper examples, um, the pieces themselves didn't stop once you put them together. They kind of fell through and fell apart. And when you put them in a sock to kind of block them or even take photos, once you put uh, it in the sock, it lost its support and it, the pieces would just kind of fall apart. So the problem with that, I, I felt, was that they needed a little bit more. So certainly you can use them the way they are, but I felt they were unstable in that the parts wouldn't stay together. But it's a really good idea. In comes my idea. So we'll put that aside. So what I did is very simple. I took the original wooden form. Um, and I just secured it with this custom-made uh, Velcro elastic thing, but that's not the point. The point was is I took the component and using um, some very thin wood, this is actually a upcycled Ikea bookcase, uh, rather a magazine holder, the wooden ones that you can get two packs of, one sits inside the other. Um, and I just took it apart to kind of reuse the wood just because it's very similar to this. So basically, I, I modified those components of that magazine holder organizer, and I just glued them to the back of each toe section of each of my sock blockers. So now, uh, when you uh, put the parts together, they're supported. It doesn't fall through like it did. So now you can simply like that, and that's perfect. Uh, and then adjust the length, etc. So I really do still love these and in fact love these even more. And the reason why um, I totally recommend a person doing something as simple as adding this back part is now that beyond that you now have the stability of it, by adding this wood back part, you now have that space uh, filled between the toe and the sock. Because when you were using it before, and uh, you extended the toe part further and you had it in a sock, a good portion of it, like here and here, would be kind of empty, non-supported, and the sock would look funny because that part would be not supported. The sock would go here, then it would go down, then the toe, anyways. So by adding this back part, when you extend them, and I plan only to extend this as far as to say here, you can see, regardless the profile is, if the sock was on there, you wouldn't necessarily know that it's extended beyond how long it is. So you can effectively use this, uh, this is the small version. You could use this like this, you could adjust it, use it like that, etc. I like to recommend that you just go as far as there and use it as much as that. Now certainly you could shove this in a sock that it would fit and uh, use it as that, but I would prefer for my own use that now that I've assembled it, to put an elastic on it or Velcro elastic, whatever works for you. This is what I did just for my own use. And now it's like a store-bought one made of that size. So this is a really good idea. I'd like to call this, is for my own reference, because I'm a bit of a geek, um, as a sock block in size, um, because you can use this combination of these two components in this way to kind of verify a sock that you feel would be whatever size that you're intending. For example, if you're intending a sock of a size, a male size, I don't know, I guess a 12, you know what those numbers are, 
Um, you could kind of lay it out after it's kind of shrunk and rested off the machine and washed. And you could kind of just see if it would work just by laying the measure down. Or you could get this uh, block system. They, they come in pair, um, small, medium, large. And do what I did so it makes it easier to use. Put it at the size that you feel that sock should be and try it on. Because now you can try to verify if the dude's not in front of you to try it on, that it actually works. So that's pretty cool. So my initial idea was to put, if it's at this extension, what size this would be. But I found when I looked at the numbers and the sock sizes that each one um, doesn't necessarily go up a sock size by each changed position. So for clarity and ease, using whatever sock uh, chart reference you choose to use. I've just quickly pulled a bunch. Um, I have a few of these because I find sock sizing probably as hard as some other people. Uh, trying to get the right size. I've got this off of the web's website and it has all these inches and centimeters for how long things should be, etc. So using how long this should be is an approximate how the foot would be. Now keep in mind that whenever you make a sock, it should never be made exactly to the foot size. There should always be an, a 10, was it a 10% uh, negative ease? So basically there should be a bit of stretch to the sock as it makes, uh, as it's put on the foot so that it fits just right versus made exactly to the size of the foot. And then when you wear it, it's too loose. So other things you could do here is I found, for example, a website that had this printable guide for men shoe size. And it's simply one of the simple, simple way of measuring a foot. Uh, you can put the heel there and just kind of see where the toe is. So something as simple as this, I will use um, the links to all of these items. And I will uh, quote them for ease. So if I took this sock, as, or rather this sock form, as it is here, if I didn't know what sock the size this was, I would put the heel as you would, and I would put it on my measure, which is about size 14, which is kind of nice to know. And that's the men's. Now, if you pop it on over to the woman's, oh, and it's just, it's about size 13 woman's. So it's very easy to use. So it's no longer just something that makes your your made sock look nice. It has a utility feature to it, a tool. So there you are. This is what I, among the few things I've been doing lately, uh, something that I've done uh, just to kind of make it easier to use. And I totally recommend these. Um, like I said, I've got the small, medium, and large. I've come to realize I might not have needed the large, but I initially thought I'd need like a bigger size to compare with. So this one here you're seeing is the medium. Um, so just using that again as an example, when you extend it, because of that back piece, you still have a profile that is supported when the sock is covered, you wouldn't even know really it's there. So there you are. All right, so thank you for your time and a uh, pleasant sock journey to you all. Uh, as I said, um, all the things you might have seen on the screen here or things I might find useful, I will include in the information. Thank you so much.